Hey, what I've got laid out here before me is a bunch of professional grade drywall finishing, taping and finishing tools. Question I'm gonna to answer today is, do you really need these? Or can you just get it done with pan, knife, you know, good old hand tools? We're gonna to answer that next. All right, for those of you that don't know what you're seeing right here, this is what the pros use when they're taping and finishing houses. Now, not everybody. So I'm going to uh, talk about who needs these, who might benefit from these and why and so on. Now, first of all, I'll tell you that I was running a set of tools like this called Ames Taping Tools. They were kind of like the original way back in the 70s. My dad did this. He had me on a job in 1969 spotting nails off of screws, uh, off of stilts. And uh, back then we ran all Ames tools. You had to rent them. And uh, honestly, they were pretty good tools, but they've come a long ways. Today's tools are leaps and bounds above what they used to be. But the big question here I'm gonna answer in this video is, do you really need them? who needs them and why you might need them and why you might not. Now, if you want to find out how to run these tools, I'm gonna to be putting out separate videos showing how to maintain, set up and run each of these tools. So I'll probably do a video just on the, say these flat boxes and one on the taping tools and so on. I'm also gonna do a video about this brand of tools and are they really any good? Now I hear a lot of comments. I've seen, not a lot, but I've seen a few comments out there. Oh, that's Chinese junk and you know, they're low quality, they break easy, all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna address that in a separate video. So be sure you watch my future videos. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell. And then that way you won't miss out. And I'm gonna give my honest opinion. Now, first of all, I want to address the issue of, am I just selling these to make money? And you know, do I really use these? Do I really uh, use level five at all? Well, first thing, let me show you. Notice all these tools look nice and shiny and new. That's because level five was kind enough to send me all these tools so I could demonstrate them for you and do this series for you. But I have owned level five tools. This is just one example here. This is a 10 inch box. You'll notice the side looks totally different. That's because this is an older style box. I've had this, uh, I think I've had this about six, seven, eight years, I don't know. And it was used when I bought it and I've never done a thing to this box as far as uh, adjusting it, replacing parts. Now I haven't used it a ton, but here's the other part of this equation. Here's my old handle and you can see it's pretty well worn. It looks totally different than this handle. Notice how it's bigger, thicker. They've come a long ways. Like I say, they've gotten better. Uh, I think the quality has gotten better in a lot of ways, but we're not going to talk about that today. I'm just showing you that yes, I have owned and used their tools. Now I'm the type of guy who, yes, I'm going to do sponsored videos. And yes, I'm going to promote some tools because we have to pay for our way here on YouTube. We're not doing this for free. I'm here to help you guys. But at the same time, I spend thousands of hours a year and thousands of dollars on equipment. I just bought two new, three new cameras for a job I got coming up because I wanted to give you guys the best view, the best quality. It's a constant uh, thing we're investing all the time we spend a ton of time putting these videos out, so we have to make some money on it, and I appreciate your support. So if any of this benefits you, be sure and click that thumbs up and give me a comment. Comments really help my videos get shown more. And then if you decide you wanna purchase anything in our videos, yes, we do make a small commission on it. I mean, it's like 5% and 3% on Amazon, so it's not a lot, guys, but it all helps 
it makes it worth it for me to do this is my future so so yes um, I do promote these tools but only the tools I believe in who needs these tools who doesn't and why it might benefit you so if you didn't know these are basically called semi-automatic taping and finishing tools now can you go onto a new construction job and tape and finish it without these tools pretty much yeah you could probably do without every single tool here but i've done that i've been there's been times like i got out of the military in 1991 i had gotten rid of most of my tools i started over again i had my basic hand tools and that like for example this tool right here i bought this knife and another one just like it in 1982 and i remember buying them and here it is many many years later they're still they're still going so i've always kept my basic hand tools but these i i rented these from ames just like my dad did and he had them so i've never actually bought very many i bought a few but i got rid of most like i say when i got uh, when i was in the military and not needing it and then when i came back here to colorado I got back into drywall again because it's always something I know how to do and I can make good money at it. And me and my brother-in-law, we went out and just started doing it by hand. We had a banjo and our pans and knives and that's pretty much it. And the reason you might need them too is these tools will make you a ton of money. Seriously. Yeah, they cost thousands of dollars. They're, they're three, four thousand dollars depending if you buy a really full set I think the high end is about four thousand, um, but you can get into them uh, simpler if you need to. But honestly, when you learn how to run these tools, they will make you a ton of money. Now, I hear the old argument out there: "Oh, I can tape and you know I can float joints out just as fast by hand, or I'm pretty dang fast." I guarantee you, you can't keep up with me running this tool right here. So basically, as fast as you can walk with this mud box, this flat box here, you can coat a joint. You're done. One pass. You don't have to go over it again. Some guys do, but you don't have to. These tools are engineered to put the mud on in a nice shape. It gives you just the right crown. The crown is adjustable by uh, turning this little wheel right here that adjusts this flexible crown. This blade is fl f flexible. So it will adjust how much mud you're putting on and you can put it on, I mean, dead, dead on, right on. It really does a great job. But let me go over the basic function of these tools and in a future video, I'll go over it more. So we're going to start right over here. This is kind of like the core of the system. This is the pump. This pump, as it sounds like, it pumps the mud out. This pump feeds this tool, it feeds these tools, it feeds this tool, it feeds this one. It's the backbone to all those tools. And it does it in various ways. This is the gooseneck, it goes on here, and this is what feeds the bazooka, which is the semi-automatic taper. Then it comes with these fittings here. One of these will feed this box, and one of them will feed these, so you got everything you need right here with this pump set up to feed mud into all these. That pump is really well made. Now let me show you what I've been using for years. I had this old pump right here and it kind of did the job, but honestly, it does, it's nothing like this. This thing's got a lot of features that I'm really impressed with, like little things like this wrench right here for tightening these and loosening. Uh, other little things like this handle is removable really quick. You just pull these pins and it disassembles. And it's a quick, it's got a little bearing there so these pins just lock in place there. Oh. Okay, I got a little round bunch just there and kicked this handle off. All right, so the next part is this. This is the famous bazooka. This is my favorite tool. I used to run this when I was 18 years old in about 1980. And I could keep two or three guys hopping behind me and we hauled butt i'm telling you we were fast and i'm going to show you i'm 60 years old i haven't run one 20 some years i bet you i can still run it as fast as about anybody out there because once you learn how to run this it becomes second nature 
quick rundown on what this thing does. Obviously this tube holds mud. You pump it in up here, it fills it all the way up to here, has a piston in it. A piston's got a cable that's connected to this wheel and as this wheel rolls, it pulls the piston, which pushes the mud out, which puts it on the joint tape and, and the joint tape is fed. You can feed it out a little bit by this slide tube. It also just feeds, once you get it stuck to the wall, it just goes on the wall um, just by friction basically. And as it rolls, it's constantly putting just the right amount of mud on. Then when you get to the end, you pull this lever and it cuts the tape for you. If you're taping the angles, you flip this little lever out right here. It puts it into the inside angles and creases it for you. When it runs out of mud, it reaches up here. The piston comes up here, it pushes some levers which activate or deactivate this wheel right here so it quits trying to pull the piston up, tells you it's empty. So it's really, really sophisticated. And at first it's a little bit tricky to run, but once you get the hang of it, you know, it might take you a job or two to really get the hang of it. But if you really practice, and I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks on how to get good on this. Cause like I say, I could run this thing really fast, just about as fast as I could run. I literally did like a, a jog when we were on the job it would put the mud on. So then after you put the mud on, say when you're taping the inside angles, this tool here rolls it into the inside angle. It's got little wheels on it and it just rolls the tape and pushes the mud out a little bit. It squeezes out just the right amount. And then if you're starting out, you use this two inch, you could do it with a three inch. This is a flexible angle head. It's got little wheels in here. This flexes so that it can accommodate varying angles. It doesn't have to be a perfect 90. It will work in a 88 degree or something like that. So this just snaps into here. You, you can pull this lever back and it, uh, or push it forward and it releases a spring tension in there. Snaps on, it's not coming off. This pivots on here. So you get it up into the angle, inside angle and you run along and it glazes it and it smooths everything out, leaves it nice and smooth. And I'm going to demonstrate that in future videos, like I say. And then you also have uh, these handles, by the way, are all adjustable. You can get non-adjustable or adjustable. These cost more, but they're really handy if you can afford them. So then we got the bigger one, and this is mostly for the final process, which I'll tell you in a second. Now, after you've taped it and you let it dry, you got to coat it, right? Well, that's what these are for. This is a 10 inch box. God, what am I doing here? I think, what have I done? I think I put the damn thing on upside down. I guess. Okay, once you mount the handle to the mud box, I put it on upside down at first. I haven't used mine in a while, but that handle looks different. Anyway, you get this set up right here and to run it, you have this braking mechanism, which is controlled by this squeeze handle here. You notice once I squeeze it, it doesn't move. It stays at the angle it's locked into, but if I release it, it moves. I lock it. It's locked again. So that's what I use this for, but you would go up to a 12 inch most of the time. And then when you go to clean them, they're really pretty simple. You flip these two levers here and that back comes out of there. You spray it out, you're clean. So you got two coats of mud on. You got to spot the screws and nails, right? Well, you could do it by hand, but they do have these nail spotters and that's all this is for. It's same principle as that. It's like a mini version of this. Now, after you tape the angles, you generally have to coat them one time well that's what this is it's a mud box for the angles same principle it squeezes the mud out mud goes in here comes out through this angle head so we would put this on and there we go we're ready to go coat the angles it this puts on a nice pretty coat of mud you still have to get into the inside three ways where the walls meet and the ceiling meets you have to do those by hand. There's no tool for that. That's where some good 
knife skills come into play. So basically, that's what the tools do. Now, who doesn't need this? You know, anybody could benefit from this, but if you don't do very much work, the benefit might not be worth it because again, they are kind of expensive. So yeah, they cost a little bit of money, but in the end, it's going to make you money because you're gonna get jobs done so much faster and you're gonna spend less time doing it. So you're gonna make your customers happier. And it just, it really is recommended for anybody that's taping and finishing new construction. So hey guys, I hope that helped you out. And if you're interested in getting any of these tools, I can get you some sale discounts. I can get you at least 10% off with my affiliate code. I'll put the link in the description down below. But what you do is you click on my link and go there and just look because especially right now at the holidays, if you watch this around Christmas when I'm putting this out, there's sales going on fairly often. But as a minimum, you can get 10%. Now, if you call in your order, do me a favor and ask for uh, to make sure I get credit. Otherwise, I don't get anything for helping you guys out. So the best way is if you click on my link and just place the order over the internet, I get credit every time. But as always, thanks for stopping by and I look forward to seeing you guys on future videos and I hope I helped you out. Take care, everybody.